Reverend Matthew Jackson. Now, I welcome you again for being here. Time is already far gone, so I won't waste uh, much of your time. We we'll both straight and watch the movie, and then after that, to we'll go into discussion. It was very difficult to pick what because even the starter asked the project was six episodes. By far, when we started writing the writer, I mean that we have to see what leads to all this criminality, and then we have to tackle so many things. So we had ten episodes instead of the six, and um, yeah, one is almost about forty-five minutes. So just imagine ten times forty-five, and I just have to make a summary of it. So I had to pick some, but the whole movie has been on. TV for almost uh, three months ongoing. So it's also on YouTube, so the professionals can also always go back and up, watch the whole. So, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you My Son is Fine, produced by Stitten Gum. Enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm Andrei Vipagene, I'm uh, the Network Community Officer of uh, Amsterdam Southeast and I also work closely with uh, youth uh, officers here in, uh, here in Southeast. My reaction is now I've seen the whole, uh, the whole product uh, in a summarized version, but um, I think it shows the way how it's happening now, nowadays with our youth. So I think it's a very realistic um, way of showing Everybody, what's happening? What we saw um, is a film about what older children, but what is happening uh, as an uh, elder child begins even in, in, in the young age. So this is not just one night it started. At a very young age, things go on in a child's life that leads to this uh, path. So when we are addressing the issue, I think we just don't jump to when it started at this age, but we have to go back to how a child developed to choose or to walk into this path. It was so difficult for parents to allow their 15, 16 year old to play this role, but that was our um, because we know it starts earlier than so we had a 20 year 21 year old playing seventy like and Lila was supposed to be <laughs> 17 <laughs> but nobody wants to allow the child to play that role. So we are not open. Everybody's son is fine. So if I have a problem and I even want to share it's so difficult because everybody is saying it's okay in my home. So how do you bring yours out? Get to a point that you know your child will end up in jail. How can we trust the police to come? What is there with the professional? Where do we come to you? What can we discuss with you? Because we are even afraid that you take our case away. You know? So, we are struggling, not that we are in denial. We know there's a problem. And we are afraid to approach the problem. I watch the, the movie, uh, but most of the time when we are in love with our spouse, we believe them so much and these men use our children to manipulate us. We have two categories of uh, children growing up here. In we have the category, like she saying, they were born here. And then we have the category of they were born here. Both groups have their challenges and their problems. Um, when I look at a child that is born here, and maybe also the child that came also go to the same thing. Our upbringing in the Ghanaian culture is more um, of the 
physical sign. So bed, bread, and bath. Most of the time, the the skill to um, to meet the emotional need of our child, of our children, is not present. We we we, we get to think like children don't have problems. We see them as children; they don't have problems. If, if there is bread, if there is bath, if there is bed. What, what problems do you have? But our children too, they have problems. And it seems like we, we don't um, look at the emotional development of the child. So they are in the homes with us, they are growing up, they have the bread, bath, and, 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 and bed, everything is all right. But emotionally, when they are growing up, we, we tend to be to be separating from each other. We tend to be separating. When they are children, the, what we see as the emotional side of, of our children is we, we have them, we, 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 we have them, we kiss them, we do all those things. But immediately they start to be growing up like a group, group uh, six, group seven, group eight. We don't do those things with them anymore. So then it's like the emotional development, uh, it doesn't stop, it's continuing, but we don't have any link with them anymore. So when we separate like that at that young age, and they are worse, wrestling with their emotional development and their problems, we don't kind of be there to help them. And we, we then go about the way of preaching them. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. It's you don't have to, you don't have, and we, we start to come into a, a, a negative pattern with them. The negative pattern that we come with them is we only see now the negative things they are doing and not the positive things they are doing. So we don't give attention to the positive things they are doing, but the negative things that they are doing is what we have now focused on. And what happens is they lose their self-confidence, they lose their self, self-identity, they become, you know, confused. And emotionally, we are driven apart. And so to me, as a Ghanaian who has also gone through this kind of upbringing and I see a lot happening in my work, the children I come into contact with, I think we as Ghanaian parents should now be more into the emotional development of our children. We should focus more on that. We don't know how to do it because in our own upbringing, we didn't go through that. We didn't have that. So we don't know how to do it. But it's about time that we, we focus on that, just like we focus on the linear prestasi. That youngsters are trying to find their identity, just also struggling with identity. So they are not emotionally uh, stable, um, and they are looking for identification. The identification they will find is in the groups they are living on the street. So when they identify themselves, first of all, they are one of a group. So they are very strong groups, they are more like family actually. They are really their brothers, um, and that's the moment when they are uh, creating uh, criminal activities. And when that happens, then it's very difficult for us because then we see them uh, in our police system and we see them on the street. Then it's for us, then we know uh, we have to act right now, we have to stop it. And that's the most important thing. The young sister is talking about that they go to the streets looking for. Uh, people that they call family. I mean, if you have a family at home and you feel safe and you, you feel uh, trusted, you can trust your mom, even if it's a single mom, or you can trust your mom and your dad, you don't go look for people on the streets who you call family because you already have it. And most of our children, when our children come to the age of from six and seven and eight, they start to miss that feeling with us. They start to miss it. 
and we miss the boat by not focusing on the positive things that they are bringing and they are uh, uh, contributing in, in our home, but we are then rather focused on the negative that they are doing. And then we keep saying the negative, and then we come with them in a negative spiral. So she knows, as for me, I'm not good anyway. Sometimes your child will tell you that I'm stressed. How do you take it? Your child can tell you that I'm depressed. How do you take it? But why do you take our children from us when we have not recognized this kind of situation and then you come in the what? What we see a lot when we come to um, families for where our sorrows of our children, um, uh, parents don't know uh, how they have to reach uh, emotionally the children. Um, and they say, it's okay, it's okay, it's all okay here. And we um, uh, will learn them uh, the things to do the best for the children, but they say there is nothing, there is a lot of shame. And, yeah. and, and um, yeah, sometimes we ask, yeah. we ask uh, um, do you want um, help from a sort of aquaba source of uh, uh, a church from, from Ghana, uh, a pastor or something, and most of all the, we heard, uh, no, 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 we are ashamed for our problems we don't want to, and, and, and we, we fix it by ourselves. And um, that's, yeah, what she's saying, what she's saying is, that it with the example let's see, uh, Professionals have seen mm -hmm. that your child is in stress mm -hmm. and is in depression. Mm -hmm. Professionals have seen that. Professionals have to do something to help the child. So when professionals come to you and say, hey, madam, we are seeing that your child is in stress and depressed. Your reaction, mm -hmm. your reaction to them will make them take the child away from the home or not take the child away from the home. If your reaction is, no, 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 there is no problem. There is nothing with this child. She eats, she drinks, she goes to school, <coughs> there is nothing with this child. You are denying that this child needs help. And until you stay in denial, we can't give you the child for, so that the child goes on <coughs> suffering from your denial. And how long your denial will take means that this child doesn't get any help. And that is wrong on any professional side to see a child suffering and not helping. So, you know, it is no professional, no institute's intention to pick away, to take away your child away from you. You know, we recognize what for damage it does to children to take them away from home. Every institute and that deals with them away from the culture. Yeah, the every very institute. Important. Every institute that works with children and parents is our number one priority not to do that. Never to do that. Until it is, you have done everything that you could and it does not work. We have children, we have Ghanaian children in Ghanaian homes who don't appreciate their culture. They rather choose the Western culture. They, they, they like to develop in the Western culture more than the Ghanaian culture. Example, even food. Music. Even our food, food music. our music, um, the way we do things. Um, it's not always like that. I'm not, it's not always. Because I myself, I grew up here and I also have a Ghanaian background as well. But I would rather say it is the parent you are with that makes the child like that because my mom is really young and she grew up here too and I love my culture and I also try to be also in the Dutch culture as well but if you have like an, uh, a mom that has a typical Ghanaian background or a dad has a typical Ghanaian background you wouldn't like to be in that culture you would like to rather be Dutch so it's not like that that no change. No, what I'm saying is not every child. <coughs> if you are talking, you 
you are giving examples, you are giving examples of sometimes what happens in some homes. So some children grow up uh, in, in a Ghanaian home being brought up with the two cultures. And those children, they love it. They love being brought up in the two cultures. They experience the Ghanaian way of doing things. They experience in their home, they feel both identities. Those children, you see them, okay. But a child who in her home, she is not having the opportunity to exercise the, um, because we are not sharing. Look critically at, about the way you do things in the home and see whether this child feels comfortable with both cultures. So then I will help you to see where I will ask the child to, what does your parent do that you know you have difficulties with? And then you know this child will start saying this and this and this I have difficulty with and also this and this and this I feel fine. Then we talk about this. So then you will know as a parent that okay, uh, it's a fact that we are living in two cultures. Uh, kids from different backgrounds, yeah, we, you like you make her or him feel too comfortable with you instead of making them feel comfortable talking to their parents. So instead of drawing them closer to you, you try and draw them closer to the parents, try and sit down with the parents and the child as well. Instead of like it's like basically I respect your profession and everything you do, I respect it. But what I'm trying to say is instead of taking the child separate to talk to the child only and then later go to the parent, yeah, your child said this. It's like you're putting two heads against each other. Rather just sit them all down and talk about the problem that moment because that's the feeling um, Ghanaian or any other parent will get that you are taking my child from me. And then later the child will feel so comfortable with you, they will turn against their parents and it will turn into a whole different drama. And it will get worse than it already worse. I know. So actually, like instead of helping the problem, you're only worsening it. I know what you are saying, I know. And it does happen also in the practice. It does happen. It's rather unfortunate. Every worker works differently. Every worker works differently. But one dilemma that a worker who chooses to go this way faces is when the parent is against you. I understand, but you need to understand that every parent will be against the whole situation because we are not used to this whole profession thing. People coming in our home and leaving. Nobody is used to that. Nobody likes that like, getting people involved in their personal issues. So instead of making the child feel comfortable, make the parents feel comfortable rather. So you can work with the child and the parent at the same time because the only thing that will go through a child, no matter what happens, and child will always stay loyal to the parent. So going through the parent, you can go through the child and you can change the child instead of making the situation worse to the extent that you have to actually take the child out of the house, to the extent to actually make the, let the child misbehave in any manner because it's putting the pressure on us, it's giving us more stress. You think you're helping us, you think, okay, we are doing this to help the child. It's actually hurting us more, and that's up to you, and none of you of the profession actually realize that you're doing to the child. Well spoken. It's really damaging. Spoken really well. And we will take it that way, we will take it to our backgrounds. So we will take what we have to take to our backgrounds. In case you have a child, a girl or a boy, and you, before you do everything together, like you are saying, and then you see that your son or your daughter is changing, then you go to them to ask them, you need help or uh, good morning, how are you? And you, you want to talk to your daughter to see the problem with the child pushing you. What should you do? Puberty begins around the group seven and group eight, then puberty starts. And as parents, we need to know the uh, development stages, how children behave. Around group seven, group eight, when they are entering into the puberty and they're going to start, then they start to push you as parents away. It's part of the development. How do you, as parents, you uh, react? to that uh, phase 
of their pushing away. It's very important. You have to know how to, to respond to that development phase because it's natural. Naturally, when they come into that phase, the, you as their safe haven, they already have it. But now they want to go to the world. They have, want to go and see the world to make their own identity in the world. So it's part of it that they will be pushing you away. And your response to that age is crit critical how you do. Your response can push them more away or your response can give them the space to be alone but at the same time with you in the background. And how you do it is an art that you should know. I mean, when you, you, you start to be a parent, you know what it is you have to One child is in the puberty more extreme than the other child. So maybe by the first child, you, the puberty experience for you as a child was not so extreme. So you went through easily. But as another child, Puberty is so extreme, you don't know how to deal with it. And these are where you need, you can go and ask for help. You know, you come to us, you go to your uh, store, you go to the school, uh, to ask, hey, I see my child behaving this way. I did not experience that with that first one, but this one is behaving this way. How do I respond to that? You know, when you are, when they are pushing you away and you are forcing yourself on them, they will push you more. They will push you more. It's part of the development. But when they are pushing a, a, you away, and you you make them you get you make them get the feeling that okay, I understand. I I accept your wanting to have a space, but you know I'm still in the background waiting for you. You, you see, then they will go over, and then the union will come back again. As you were speaking, you said that when the parents are going through issues, they should come to you. Uh, that gives me the understanding that you have you have the know-how, well, yeah. probably to you too. Yeah. Um, my question is, it seems like um, the government here knows that there are immigrants here who have children here, and they do politi uh, policies and programs for everything. Why is it that um, like nobody or no organization have decided to look into the issues that immigrant children go through and come up with policies or I mean draw up a scheme or a program as to how the parents will be taught um, on how to deal with these children. But what I'm hearing now is oh wait for the problem to start, then but that is, a, to that is the big brand, the migrant problem. There are a lot of uh, programs, trainings, uh, a lot of things that uh, Hementes have done, that the government have put in place. It, you know, sometimes I frustrate myself and I say, there is a lot of knowledge, but we are not going for the knowledge. You know, focus knowledge on certain cultural There is a lot of knowledge and programs, uh, trainings that you can follow. As professionals, we also follow a lot of trainings, you know, to, to keep us abreast with, with development and, and, and skills and that kind of thing. And as parents, too, there are also a lot of uh, trainings that you can follow to develop or learn skills. But when you, you call them, they don't come. So basically, there's, maybe there's more. I can also give an answer on that because I have a slightly different opinion about it. Um, because I think what you say is, um, I think a part of it is right. Because as a government, we are still not yet there to give inclusive help. And that's for, all, for the complete government, that's a problem. That's the reason why we're looking for diversion. In, very, in various uh, organizations, because we need to have more know-how. So yeah, we have a lot of programs, and we can, we can uh, give a lot of uh, cultural um, specified information and help, but we are not yet there. So let, when, when I say for my organization, we are not yet there. We still have to develop ourselves 
learning from all the cultures, learning from all the ways to approach certain cultures, how to help certain cultures, that's what we call inclusion. That's still in the progress, but we are willing to do it. And I think that here in Southeast there are uh, organizations who are working here who are, more, uh, who are much further than in other parts of Holland. And let's say for that because I think that a lot of cultures there is ex uh, expertise on it in this uh, in this part of uh, of Amsterdam. But we're still we still have to, have to work on those uh, inclusive uh, help solutions. Exactly, the police. But in my in my um, work. Like our linking things, we have a lot of programs that parents can uh, join, take part of it, you know, to learn skills. I always say that I I find it rather unfortunate for myself that I got knowledge of these skills when my children were already grown ups. Because I think when my children were young, if I had had the skills that I, I now know, if I had follow those training that I now know are available, I think I would have done a fantastic job. I would have enjoyed being a mother, motherhood, and growing up with my children. So it pains me, you know, to see that there, there is knowledge available, but we are not coming. I hear ook so many things, because I hear ook the giant that I ask me very much, we trekken ouders erbij en maken een groot geheel. Um, uh, 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 ik hoor ook meneer Zegta uh, um, um, informeren ons vooraf. Dat is voor je jeugdbescherming best moeilijk. Ja. Want jeugdbescherming komt altijd als er zorgen zijn. Ja. Dus dan, die komt eigenlijk altijd te laat. En dat is ook de reden dat er best wel vaak overgegaan wordt tot uit huisplaatsen, omdat het toch eigenlijk al te laat is. Maar wij proberen ook om mensen te betrekken en mensen in het verhaal mee te nemen en, en, en ouders te proberen om te veranderen. En daar maakt het echt, echt niet uit of je Nederlandse cultuur, een Marokkaanse cultuur of een Afrikaanse cultuur. Want in, 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 in alle verschillen treffen wij ouders die op het moment dat wij er betrokken zijn, um, uh, zeggen van nee, ik heb hier geen zin in. Ga maar weg, ik wil niet leren, want het, het, het treft een kwetsbaarheid. Je komt veel te dicht bij mensen hun kwetsbaarheid uh, als jeugdbescherming. Dus dat is best moeilijk om iedereen te betrekken. Hè. Uiteindelijk wil je gewoon dat kind beschermen. En dat maakt ook, wat mevrouw de weg is, hè, dat als een kind echt uit huis geplaatst wordt, ja, dan gaat hij veranderen. Want die, heet, die wordt pas uit huis geplaatst als die wat gemist heeft thuis. En dan gaat het kind ook veranderen. En natuurlijk, ook jeugdbescherming maakt fouten. En maakt kindschappen fouten. En plaatst de kinderen ook uit huis wat niet gaat doen. En dat geef ik ook echt 100% goed. We hebben twee verschillende opbrengingen. Come here is adopting the living here. So when we have our kids here and we are with them from the first day and we are with them, we teach them what we were taught back home. But when they are growing and they come open to the society, then they become to wild out from what we taught them. They become open to the society, to school, internet, and everything. Right. Then you, the parent, you are thinking of what you are doing, or what you are taught back to what you do. No, you need to think outside the box. What that I don't know, that I must know. Back home is like, you are a child, I'm a father. You don't need anything, I feel you have to grow in yours is to learn. If you are sick, I'll take you to the hospital. Just come, sleep, learn. That is it. I don't have time to come and sit with you. I have house school. Even homework is sometimes very hard for a parent to sit by the gate. Oh, can we do the homework together? No, he's busy doing something else. So you see, they start growing lonely. So when they, they get open hands, something, that is where they get to learn more. And more by then, you the parent, you are losing your kid. 
or you don't know. That is where they become slamming the door at you all the time. They will slam the door at you all the time. Then you will start thinking, my child is going well. What am I doing? I'm doing my best. But there are some times you need to sit him down or her down. From the beginning, they are a child. But begin to develop a friendship relationship. So that whatever he might be hiding or she might be hiding from you, it has filled it out. But when you have two of yourself, then your kids thinking that, oh, I provide everything, so he has no needs, then I think we have backsliding in our kids. Because our kids back home are different from the ones here. If they go, they see how different they are. And when we bring something from home and the country, they also see how different. They also change totally at once and you lose them. So I think the parents over here, we need to learn when the moment we begin to see changes in our kids, where to seek help, how to attend to them, how to question them. You know, so that upbringing is a, is, is a matter of abreast with time. Upbringing is not what you know uh, 50 years ago, the same is today. We are in a different generation, different times, different culture. We, we have the challenge of a different culture, and we have the challenge of different generation, with di different challenges, social media and all that kind of thing. So if you, as parents, uh, keep uh, thinking about upbringing as it was 60 years ago, 50 years ago, or 40 years ago, and that is the same way you want to go about it, you miss the story. Well, your advice to any parent is ask your child, what do you do? What do you want? What can I help you to help any problem? Instead of going on looking for someone you like a person that you you have to help is sitting in front of you why don't you ask your own child what do you need instead of going outside to go and ask a different parent what do you do it doesn't work because every child is different every child needs a different treatment or any anything else so going to professionals to look for help i would say do that later after you ask your child what do you actually need what can i do for you First, you begin with a child, and if you, it works for you, fine. But if it doesn't work, and you, you think you still need something extra to help the child, it's a most useful professional help. But what the parents, actually, most of the African parents who grow up is shout, be angry. And sadly, you don't create a safe place for them to talk. Because it's like, you have me. You know, as a child, if I say this right now, I don't know why that's going to be angry. You don't allow your child to speak. You don't allow your child to be who or he is. And it's, that's wrong. So I would advise any African parent just to sit down and see how you can come friends with your child. I would like to advise Whenever we come across this issue that we are talking about, we only rely on telling the pastor, uh, church leaders, prayers, but sometimes we have to face the reality. Not everything that uh, you have to send the child to the pastor, but sometimes you see it with your eyes. Other parents teach other parents how to treat their daughter or son when it comes to comparison. Because you be at church, you will notice a child who is in a very good behavior. So instead of giving the mother to learn something, maybe you can go to the mother and learn something. But rather at home, they will be comparing, look at this, my friend child, they are not behaving the same as... So this is one of the factors that is killing being the African. Very yeah. Very yeah. Very so very that's very what I would have there. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. I, I was brought here when I was a child. If uh, if um, a parents are raising a child, oh, yeah, it depends on the foundation where the parents will use to build the child to make the child solid or not. Because I believe if a parent, we like a Ghanaian mom, 
stop being too typical and then be more like a friend instead of a mother to their child. I think it will make this problem become less. Um, I was going through the same problem. She's my daughter. I was going through the same problem with her. And I noticed that if I'm, if I'm going to raise my daughter up as the way I was raised up, raised up, I will end up damaging her. Because it came to a point in my life that I needed a friend. And because I, I was very clever when I, when I was at school, in the Bantu school, I was very, very clever. But because of there were certain things were missing in my life, I started joining an easy group. And those are the group that hangs in a corner, roaming around. They are so easy to be friends with. And then, um, a little by little, you see that your life, your life is going to, to the other way. So as a clever child, I had to come all the way down. So I was, as I gave birth, raising my child, I noticed that, hey, if I bring my daughter also into the same position, she's going to miss up a whole lot of things like I did. So we had a uh, child protectors in our home. We had people who were coming. The first person that came told us, oh, if your child is being too so bad, then let's take her out of the house. Let her go to the major, major group or something. I was like, no, I'm not giving my daughter away. I want to work things out with her. And then I sat down as a parent. I start thinking what what I missed in my life, then I was like, okay, if I can't be like a typical mother to my daughter because I want her to do her best, then I need to join her. And by joining her is to limit myself as a mother to become her friend, to be able to understand her, to be able to help her as the way she needs to be helped. Because what we do not know is that Ghanaian parents don't like to give their kids freedom. Now, they are saying, I was hearing that, why is it that when they go to the house and they start being worse? Now, this is the secret, because I have been there. The secret is, we don't have freedom when we are with our parents. So the moment we get that freedom, we want to experience everything. And every day, like you are out of the cake, you want to learn how to smoke, you want to wear everything, and then you get out of hand. That is why. John was saying that uh, we are too typical. Yes, we are typical. What we do in back in Ghana, we can't do it here. If you being too typical to your child is not working, then learn to also limit yourself. You are living in Holland. The culture is different. The, the way they raise kids is also different. It is up to you, the parents, to be to be friends with your child. There's one thing we are missing: is we are not friends with our children. I have, it's very difficult for a Ghanaian mom to come home and ask your daughter, so how was school? How did you do it? How did it go? They don't do that. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> and that's it. And that's it. And meanwhile, your child, look, kids get depressed, and the depression they get is from school. And how is it happening? It happens because they, they have, especially on the exams moment, do you know the stress and the depression they go through? And then you want to talk to a mother who doesn't have any idea of what you are doing? Who even says you don't have any problem? Exactly. It's a very big stress. So for me, I think the foundation to have a solid child is starts from the parents. They need to also to cope. You can't be typical all the time. They need to learn to cope also and learn the Dutch uh, uh, culture also a little bit. Combine it with the Ghanaian culture and then raise your child up as the manner that you want your child to grow. And they should also learn to give the kids also a, a bit of freedom. When you give your, your child freedom, you also know who your child is. You will also know where can I correct her and where can I not correct her. That's all I have. Um, my name is Faustina, and I, I just want to second your talk. 
uh, is something like if the child comes from school, you are home, no matter how the case may be, you have to relax in yourself and ask how is your day? Exactly. How is he? Yeah. So then she or her can cry, oh mama, today I have this. So, oh, is that so? For me, it's what me and my daughter is a liar. It's how we used to play in the house. Sometimes he always, this, this uh, computer, everything, I don't know anything about it, but she is the one who tried to. The way we talk, and all of my children also, some are not here. Mm -hmm. Anything, they first ask me, Mama, how it is? I said, okay, let's go for plan A, plan B, so we, we, we reach C. Mm -hmm. It will be okay. So I always say that, the children are brought from Ghana to here. I try, I try to teach them my culture. And their own also, I have to put my shoe mm -hmm. on it. Of course. If she goes somewhere, I always test. Mm -hmm. What are you? Is everything okay? So my mom come in. Okay, don't be late. Do like this, be happy. Sometimes she work in the night. I cannot sleep, but I always give her the chance to do something. If something is going wrong, I say, hey, the moment you try to mm -hmm. make it with the child, anything, if anything happens, once again, you will know. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. he or she is uh, mm -hmm. uh, angry, you know that something is wrong with the child. Yeah. But if we cannot uh, uh, put our shoe in their sh uh, our feet or their shoe, mm -hmm. we cannot. Yeah, but I also notice the Ghanaian parents when it comes to like listening to their kids becomes very difficult. When your child comes home, like, Mommy, do you know what happened to me? Oh, this leave, 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 leave. I have some paper. Yeah, that happen. means we are, not, we are not open to the child. But it, it, like, it happens so much so, in Yeah, I know that. And and also, I, I, I know sometimes you cannot, uh, you try, I know some people, you try to talk to the child. But when the child went outside and come back, the attitude change. I also know. They, they give it, they are afraid of the child to talk to. Even if you say something, what you are doing is not good. They can't because they are afraid. Exactly. And if you are afraid like that, me, I always ask them, is the child born or you born? But you have to go to. You just imagine the child being afraid of her parents. Child being afraid of her parents. And then the child cannot come to you and talk to you when something is bothering them. What do you think the child will do? Definitely, when it is a girl, when you see a man, that a man is like maybe too old for her and he's showing her a little bit of love, she will go. And then if it is a boy and he joins a bad group of gang, whereby, which I know some, that they will be going out there and to be seen. Then at the end of the day, it's the same parents that they will tell you, eh, hey, you see this one was doing better, you can what you what about you? If this one is doing better, what about yeah. you? Are you also doing better? So for me, a solid child, a happy child, and a good child, and a child that has success in life, the foundation starts from the parents. Yeah. And also, look, I, I'm not scared to say this. One thing is that eh, the uh, when stepfathers and stepmothers, you know, those uh, with a child, it's always, always a secret. Yes, it's okay. If you don't take some, if, if I love a man, automatically I love his child. Mm -hmm. Why would I love a man and then come against the man's child? Mm -hmm. Why not give the same love to the child? But no, this child will be in the house doing nothing. You know. Then, when the father comes, hey, your daughter did this, your daughter did that. And instead of a father to go to your child and ask, and ask the child, what happened in the house? No, he will go and condemn the child. It's also not right. If you have a stepchild, treat the same, the child, stepchild as your own child. Mm -hmm. And as a mother that is married to, that, uh, that is half a man, your child is your property, it's your future. This man can walk away while your child will still. So if you let your child spoil, it's your own business. You understand? So I think the foundation is from the parents. The parents, the parents, the parents. It's not from the social worker. The social worker only comes in when it is critical, when there is nowhere to go. And plus, some people can also be good with their, with their child. Yeah? 
but they don't know how to go about with the children. It's good to ask for help. There's no wrong in it. When my daughter was growing up, I didn't understand her in so many ways. I voluntarily both went to the house doctor, get her the help, and she got somebody she could talk to. And then later I joined in the group. So I also, as a mother, I start learning how to understand my daughter better. I have a happy home. And I think every parent should take uh, to practice this and it will, the majority of kids going astray will be less. Yes. 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 You want to say something? Yes. Um, in a nutshell. Heel mooi verhaal. Echt gewoon super mooi verhaal. Mijn vraag is dan: hoe kan ik op het moment dat het te laat is, maar hoe kan ik ook over het een, van weerstand heen breken om bij dat stukje kwetsbaarheid te komen, wat jij duidelijk mm. hebt laten zien? Want dat is mijn grootste vraag. Als we, als we dat makkelijker zouden kunnen, dan zouden we veel meer kunnen bereiken. En dat is ook wat jij zegt, van, er is wel van alles om iets te leren, maar die drempel is zo hoog om daar naartoe te gaan. En het enige wat ik wil als ik morgen een zaak binnenkrijg van een jongere die onhandelbaar is of eh, inderdaad de politie in aanraking gekomen is, samenwerken met die ouders ja. om dat kind weer op het rechte pad te krijgen. Dat is het enige wat ik wil. Ja. Want ik weet ook dat als ik dat kind um, naar een instelling breng hier, ja. naar de boemerang breng of, of, of uh, um, uh, het, uh, een kind wat iets jonger is uit huis plaatst, dan, is, dan, dan haal ik het kind uit zijn cultuur vandaan, dan haal ik het kind um, breng ik in een groep waar nog veel meer, meer criminaliteit is, ja. is dat kind verloren. Dus dat wil ik helemaal niet. Nee. Maar ik wil samenwerken met die ouderen. Maar dat is best heel moeilijk. Is heel ja. moeilijk. En dat is, dat is bijvoorbeeld binnen de Marokkaanse cultuur super moeilijk ja, om het tussen te houden. Nee, maar dat, dat is bij de Ghanese cultuur merk ik dat het ook heel erg moeilijk is. En de grootste drempel die wij daar continu zien is schaamte. Schaamte ja. van ja, ik wil niet laten zien wat er eigenlijk aan de hand is, want ja. dat kan niet. En de buren en ja. de kerk en ja, ja. Dat, is, dat is echt heel moeilijk. Ja. 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 En ik snap ook dat dat voor die ouders heel moeilijk is, maar ja, daar zit wel de oplossing. Ja. Ze schaamte te doorbreken. Ja, ja maar ik vraag wel altijd dan ja. hoe. Ja. En ik hoor jullie hier hele mooie dingen zeggen. Ja. Om voor echt eerst naar de ouders te gaan. Om door echt eerst met de ouders, gewoon ouders uit te leggen, hé, hey, dit kan gebeuren. Dit is niet de manier. Dan nog? Dit, dan, dan ja, nog, want zo, zo ik, werken wij. Ja, maar het, het is zo moeilijk. Ik, ja, ja, ja. ik snap het, maar het is echt een manier hoe jij dus zeg maar tegen je kind zal praten, doe dan dat bij je ouders eerst. Ja. Doe dat eerst bij je ouders. Hoe voel jij dat eigenlijk? Hoe voel jij dat ik dit aanvang? Um, op wat voor manier zou jij samen met mij willen werken? Hoe moeilijk het ook is, probeer altijd die stappen eerst te nemen. I do understand you, Chris, but the thing I was telling her that the best thing to do is we have to educate, we Ghanaians, we ourselves, not somebody from the child protect, but we ourselves, we need to teach the Ghanaians. We need to, has to yeah, we need to come teach together. Yes, we need to educate yeah. them about it. And when we educate them about it, they will know that, hey, actually, it's not something big. So I was telling her, the best thing to do is, we, I can volunteer by doing that because I have been in that situation and I know how it, have, it has cost me because at the end of the day, those trauma or the drama, the stress the child is going through, it will not, the, the, it will not, the depression will come, but it doesn't start when she's going through it. It's when she's started in life, which happens to me. So then you will start going through a whole lot of stress. And it can be a very damaging when you are growing, growing up. It can make, it can slow a whole lot of your progress in life. So I was telling her, the best thing to do is to go to the churches, even if it's just for 10 minutes. We need to tell them about child protection, what they do, that, what, what um, um, your profession, what they also do, for them to understand that, hey, it is not scary. It is something that they are there to help when you cannot solve issues with your child. So they are there to help.
let's say when you come from Ghana, one thing that you don't realize is the moment you start raising children here, the problem you've caused is it's going to be a cross culture thing. Eh? It becomes a dilemma whether your child takes up the Dutch identity or the African identity. It's always a conflict in homes. And nobody leaves Africa with that in mind. Nobody. But eventually, it becomes a big issue. Now, it's a big issue. I feel that when people are coming to the Netherlands, or when they decide to stay, there is this integration orientation course. I think people should be told about it, that if you have decided to stay here, know that this is you meet with this along the way. I want to give a minute to all the artists to also tell us how they felt by being part of this project. Um, I think it was a very nice experience. I remember when, whenever we were on set and we were um, filming like um, an episode where you and I and Michael would be in, I, I used to say that, oh, this is such a deja vu. I've been through this before. It feels like this is part of my life story or something. Um, and yeah, it was just an amazing experience because I also didn't know that the police, for example, can come in and help. I thought they would just come and arrest people, just like that. So I also had to, I, I learned a lot. So yeah, and it was an amazing experience. Thank you. Thank you. Great. <laughs> I remember there was at a point that you were saying, oh my God, this story, maybe my parents would think I brought you this story. Yeah. But this is Jason. <laughs> Thank you, Lila. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, my experience with the whole project was really educative. Because as a young person, I have a mind that in the future, of course, I would like to have children myself. So it's not like that. I'm educating other people, the watchers, of course, but I'm also educating myself. I'm happy to actually educate people with this that we created. I learned something about uh, when uh, somebody came to your house, like a sister or brother, and your son or brother is doing something wrong. Uh, sometimes mothers, you have to listen to the person because I remember you told your sister that you have to look your husband. The way you go out with your daughter is not understand. Sometimes you have to open. And for me, for me, it was it was an honor to work on this project. Uh, what I learned from it was um, the way how people look to uh, um, police or other uh, professionals um, and what their fears are, um, where the community is struggling. Um, it was an eye opener for me, um, and it also uh, I brought it back to my background, to my colleagues um, that was going here today. So, well, I see a lot of, uh, um, I would say, we have, to, we have to build it further, what we did today. So we did it in the last, last few months. So. Well, it was a nice experience. I remember when she, I mean, he went looking for James, and that was in Poda, the whole building was like, there's a police here. <laughs> <laughs> and then she had to come, oh, we are acting. And then, uh, at the end of the day, they were like, so the police can be just so open to come in the film, but you know, so your role being a real police and playing that role in the community was really the new actor in the police are close. Media. <laughs> yeah. And copy. You read the. Yeah. <laughs> 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 what to do. It was like I was taken back home. Like how my mother puts me, don't do it, don't want, don't rest like this. I'm glad I did. And 
you look for more. I also realized that this whole project is an eye opener to the community mm -hmm. because um, it is an issue that is ongoing and everybody feels they know about it, they can deal with it, yet it is an issue, it's a problem. Yeah. So I feel it's an avenue to get people talking about it and create more awareness and for people to get solutions for it. So, and I did enjoy it. It was uh, quite challenging, but very nice having to work with everybody. Uh, I was practically on every scene, every set. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Let's go. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.